Hello friends. In this video we'll be building a discounted cash flow model for a company. I hope that as we build it you'll realize how similar it is to the more basic model that precedes this one in the series. In this video we will start with free cash flow and then calculate our cost of capital using the weighted average cost of capital formula, the components of which are listed here. Then calculate the present value of cash flows and finally calculate firm value using the perpetuity growth rate method and using the EBITDA multiple method. The most complex aspect of building a discounted cash flow model for a company is calculating the free cash flow. Not because the calculation itself is complex, but because of the components EBIT, depreciation, amortization, capital expenditures, and change in working capital all come from the company's financial statements. Projecting these requires a fully integrated financial statement model, much like the model we build in the series titled Integrating Financial Statements. As before, here we have the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, and your supporting schedules. I should emphasize again that if you really want to be good at building financial models, understanding how to integrate financial statements is the most important thing you can tackle. So let's move on to building our DCF. The first step is to calculate free cash flow, and to do that, we will be taking tax affected EBIT, adding back depreciation and amortization, and subtracting capital expenditures and a change in working capital. So the first step is to reference EBIT from your integrated financial statement model. We can then highlight the row and use control R to paste values across. To calculate tax affected EBIT, we will need to subtract taxes, which will be equivalent to EBIT times our tax rate. We can again paste this across. Then reference your tax rate from your integrated financial statement model. And paste it across. Finally, tax affected EBIT is just EBIT less taxes. Next we need to reference depreciation and amortization. We will be subtracting capital expenditures, so be sure to enter a negative sign before referencing your supporting schedule. Paste that across. And lastly, your change in working capital, which will be the sum of differences in your working capital accounts on your cash flow statement above. Free cash flow is then equal to tax affected EBIT plus depreciation and amortization. Recall that these are non-cash items found on the income statement and must therefore be added back to get to cash flow. We will then subtract capital expenditures. I hope it's not confusing that it's a positive sign, but we've input it as negative, and working capital. And we can then paste that across. And with that, we have our projected free cash flow for the company. The next step is to calculate our weighted average cost of capital. The formula for your weighted average cost of capital, or WAC, looks like this. It may appear complex, but all it's saying is that your cost of capital should be equivalent to the weighted average of your cost of equity and your cost of debt. This is simply the proportion of debt in your capital structure, and this is the proportion of equity in your capital structure. Your cost of equity is then calculated as the sum of your risk premium multiplied by a measure of volatility and your risk-free rate. Concepts we discussed briefly in the video on the basic DCF. This is a topic that deserves more attention and I plan to add material in reference. But in the meantime, let's focus on the model. Let's first calculate the cost of equity. In this model, let's assume that your risk-free rate is 3% and that your expected market return is 
beta will be 1.5, and with those components we can calculate our cost of equity, which is equal to the sum of your risk-free rate and your risk premium, which is the expected market return minus your risk-free rate times beta. Now let's calculate cost of debt. Let's say that your cost of debt is 8% and your tax rate is 35%. Your after-tax cost of debt is then the 8% multiplied by 1 minus your tax rate. To calculate the weighted average of these two costs of capital, we then have to input the proportion of debt in your overall capital structure. And in our example, let's say that that is 30%. The proportion of equity in your overall capital structure would then be equal to 70%. With the components calculated, we can determine our weighted average cost of capital, which is equal to the cost of equity multiplied by the proportion of equity in your capital structure and summed with your cost of debt multiplied by the proportion of debt in your capital structure, giving us a weighted average cost of capital of 12.1%. And with that, we can move on to calculating the present value of our projected free cash flows. To do that, we must first determine our discount factor, which is equal to 1 over 1 plus the weighted average cost of capital raised to the corresponding period. Oh, and don't forget to fix this cell using F4 the way I just did. Then paste this formula across using control R. As before, we can calculate the present value of these cash flows by taking our free cash flow in the projection and multiplying by the discount factor in the same period. Now let's move on to calculating firm value. We will first use the perpetuity growth rate method. Recall that the perpetuity growth rate method requires selecting a growth rate at which your final year's cash flows will grow in perpetuity. Generally, you might tie this to GDP or population growth. For our example, and because we're focused on the mechanics, we'll just arbitrarily pick 3.5%. We will next reference our weighted average cost of capital above. Sum the present value of our projected cash flows as before. and then calculate the present value of our terminal value, much the same way we did in our basic DCF. So as you may recall, the formula is free cash flow in the final projected period multiplied by 1 plus your growth rate in perpetuity and divided by the difference of your weighted average cost of capital and your growth rate in perpetuity. That gives you terminal value five years out. To discount it back accordingly, we will multiply by the discount factor in the corresponding period. And with that, we can calculate our firm value by taking the sum of the present value of our projected cash flows and the present value of our terminal value. And using this method, we have a firm value of approximately $32 million. Now let's run through the same exercise using a slightly different method. Companies are frequently valued as multiples of EBITDA. This methodology uses EBITDA in the final period multiplied by a market multiple to determine the terminal value. Generally, a lot of research goes into determining this multiple. Analysts will look at how companies are trading or being acquired and create comparable tables. But for the time being, let's pick a multiple of six. Again, we will reference our weighted average cost of capital above. Sum the present value of our projected cash flows. And then determine our terminal value by calculating EBITDA above. This can be done by summing EBIT, depreciation, 
and amortization. And to then determine our terminal value, we will apply our multiple. So let's look at that quickly. All we're doing is taking EBITDA here and multiplying by 6. That gets us our terminal value, but we must then apply the appropriate discount factor. So let's do that here. Times discount factor of 0.57. So the present value of your terminal value is $27 million. And with that, you can determine your firm value by summing these two. You likely noticed a pretty large discrepancy between these two approaches, 32 million here and nearly 37 million here. I thought this would be a pretty good opportunity to show the influence that these two variables have. For this exercise, we selected them arbitrarily. But in a real life example, a lot of research goes into calculating these. And with that, you have a fully functional discounted cash flow model that runs off a company's integrated financial statements. What that means is you can go back to the company's financial statements and run scenarios. You could change revenue growth, for example, or profitability, and immediately see how those changes affect the value here. If you like, you can use the downloadable worksheet to run through some scenarios. But in the meantime, and until the next video, you're done.